What's up guys, Big Papa Truck back with another Raid Shadow Legends video and guys, it has been a crazy week. If you don't know, uh, and I'm sure you do, uh, we just had Hurricane Milton here in Florida where I live. I am so incredibly thankful and grateful to be able to say that I am all right, that my place is all right. Um, always a scary time when you have something like this, uh, you know, coming and barreling down on you. So uh, just want to say a big thank you before we even get into the video to everyone that, you know, wished me well and kept me in their thoughts. And I know uh, there are other Raid Shadow Legends creators in Florida and also viewers that are in Florida. So to those of you who are in Florida, I hope that you are all right. Um, just a crazy, a crazy week, right? A lot of hurricanes obviously hitting America right now. And uh, just thinking about all the people that maybe weren't as fortunate as I was this past week and hoping that... Um, that you know that you're safe that you're okay and that if you need help that you get the help that you need so just wanted to take a moment to talk about that because obviously it's something that greatly affected me uh this week um so that being said i just did the pools for onrayu iasu i believe is his name they have a 10x for him right now and guess what guys i pulled him i pulled him i didn't even have to pull that many shards and he popped out so Maybe some good luck after some bad luck, right? And I said, you know what? We pulled him. I got to build a bit. I got to build him. I got to make a video on him right away and see what he can do. And so that's what we're going to do today. We've built Iasu. We're going to test him in Arena and we're going to test him in Hydra because it looks like this guy could be an absolute monster in Hydra. So, so excited to share this build with you and talk about this champion because on paper, he seems like he could be an absolute beast in a lot of different areas of the game. So let's take a look at how I've built him, what he looks like, and uh, yeah, let's let's test him out and see what he can do. All right, Onryo Iyasu, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Let's take a look at the skills here. Exorcism Cutter, the A1 hits an enemy two times, places an extra hit if the target is under a buff, so a triple hitter, because basically everyone's under a buff in this game, places two extra hits, if the target is under a buff and is from the Undead Hordes faction. So this dude is a UDK killer, potentially a Rotos killer, a Seafy killer. I mean, Undead Hordes has lots of great champions. Necrit, uh, that's that's big. Grants an extra turn if this attack kills an enemy, occurs once per skill. Oh baby, what an A1. That sounds legitimately incredible. I can't wait to see the damage on that. Just sounds bonkers. Let's take a look at the A2. Violent Purification attacks one enemy two times before each hit, destroys the target's max HP by 10%, stacking up to 50%. Effect does not work against bosses, that's okay. The damage inflicted by this skill increases by 10% for each buff and debuff on the target, stacking up to 100%. If the target is killed by this skill, places a block revive. I mean, what? What the? Well, good lord. Again, if the multipliers are here and if the damage is good, this also sounds like a potentially incredible, incredible ability. Three turn cooldown, block revive, and damage increase for buffs and debuffs. Man, that sounds nuts. Good lord. A3, Final Vengeance, attacks one enemy two times, will ignore 50% of the target's defense, as well as Stone Skin, Shield, and Strength and Buff. So this guy is basically tailor-made to take on somebody like Marichka, and he's ignoring defense as well. And again, another double hitter. So we've got single targets here all around, which is always kind of tough when it comes to arena type stuff. But then let's look at the passive, because that's where the excitement comes. Whenever this champion attacks, all enemies except the initial target receive damage equal to 25% of the damage dealt to the initial target. This extra damage will ignore 100% of each enemy's defense. The extra damage cannot be critical and will not trigger counterattacks. So basically every attack he does is an AOE, even though it's got single target multipliers on it and single target based abilities. What an insane kit. I mean, this dude has some incredible potential to be disgusting and he's a void which means no affinity issues whatsoever the champion looks cool as hell per usual raid art department always killing it um but i'm super excited to get him into the arena and test him out now obviously we don't have him awakened which is a major increase in terms of power 
Um, so can't wait to be able to do that. I mean, in terms of what you put on here, maybe Heaven Cast potentially. Polymorph also could work. Lightning Cage if you need to protect the Stone Skin buff. Uh, you know, a lot of different options you could go here. Um, even potentially something like Cruelty since you're you're hitting these people multiple times with that A1. So even something like Cruelty could work here uh, to reduce the uh, defense of, of champions. Now, those are all arena specific. If you're in Hydra, you're probably going Crushing Rend, um, you know, just to ignore more defense for, for PvE type stuff. Let's take a look at the Masteries, how we got them built out here. So pretty standard stuff. We have gone Ruthless Ambush to increase the damage just for the first hit. I think that's worth it because he has a block revive which is always a big big thing in arena we've also gone cycle of violence going to drag those skills back faster uh for doing more damage we've gone kill streak down here increasing damage when he kills somebody helm smasher of course ignoring more defense we've also gone with methodical because his a1 uh frankly his a1 is really good and you're getting extra turns potentially so we want to up the damage on that for sure especially if we kill someone. Shield Breaker, even though this A3 ignores shields, it's still a good thing for all the other abilities, so never a bad idea there. And then we've gone with a little bit of extra counterattack here with Retribution just to try to get that A1 cooking even more. So pretty standard overall nuker stuff. I mean, Ruthless Ambush is the is the main change that you might see from other people using Whirlwind of Death. That could be your alternative here. But I think this kind of makes the most sense for, for what we're looking to do with him. Let's take a look at the build. Now, I have put my absolute best gear on this dude. No joke. I pilfered my Georgia to make this build. We've got quad crit rate. Just an absolute, basically close to perfect piece right there in Savage. You'll notice I haven't built him in Stone Skin. This is definitely more of a classic arena type build. In Stone Skin, you're probably going Savage and Stone Skin. But I'm just trying to test max damage here and also see how he does in PvE. Uh, here we go with a perception helm. I mean, it's broken set, but good stats all around. Then we've got merciless here to up the attack speed, crit damage, crit rate, excitement. We've got crit damage, crit damage, ascension with attack and crit rate here with speed, hell of a pair of gloves there. And then attack percentage chest with attack percentage, ascension with crit rate and speed. And then finally attack percentage boots with triple crit damage, speed and crit rate. I mean, this is this is some of my overall best gear, I think. Um, and then for the accessories, triple attack, attack. I got to ascend this to attack. I just ran out of uh, stuff to use it on. And you can see there's more room to glyph him on certain areas. We got a crit damage reaction amulet, and we've got a merciless, um, you know, ring here, which gives us that bonus crit damage and attack. So what does it all add up to, guys? The total stats. We're looking at a whopping 8,395 attack. 222 speed so i haven't built him super fast you probably want to build him faster overall but i really wanted to see what he's capable of damage wise with 324 percent crit damage and here's the thing he's definitely a glass cannon he is probably going to get blown up in arena with these kind of survivability stats if someone doesn't protect him but we're trying to maximize damage here let's see what this champion can really do so yeah, pretty good overall build considering that he hasn't been awakened. You awaken him, he's close to 9,000 attack with more survivability and, oh yeah, a whole bunch more crit damage. So super stoked to see what this guy can do. Let's take him into dragon first and foremost and see what he looks like on the dragon. Such a unique, cool kind of kit that he's got going on. Oh, we got our, our boy Gergo there, our sweet Gergo. Love me some Gergo. Yasu, I can spell this. Yes, I did spell it correctly. Okay, sick. Let's see what he's got. Super stoked to try this out. We're in Dragon 23 here, our normal testing grounds. Uh, he doesn't get increased attack, so I guess I guess I could make him... Eh, no, I should have probably just used the Arbiter like I was doing before the other day because we got to get these buffs or these debuffs down. But this is all right. This is without increased attack. So let's see here. Attacks one enemy two times. Extra hit if the target's under a buff. There's no buffs there. So he's going to hit a two hitter here. Let's see what he does. One, two. Hey, not bad. 160. And there's opportunities for that to be way more with increased attack. So let's see here. Let's try. And you'll see he did damage to everybody, right? So he did off of an A1 damage to the entire team and doesn't trigger the counterattack, which is nuts. Uh, what are we going to leave with here? Let's 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 go with the A3. This is the the big boy ignoring defense, ignoring all the buffs. Let's test it out. Double hitter again. <laughs> just just kills her straight up. <laughs> 206k and that's a double hitter. So that's 
400,000 damage. And again, you're doing damage to everyone. And that's ignoring stone skin, right? It's ignoring stone skin. It's ignoring uh, what other buffs or, or yeah, what other buffs was ignoring there? It was ignoring shield and strengthen. So definitely made to kill. Again, three turn cooldown on this too. Made to kill someone like Marichka. Let's try the A2 here. Attacks one enemy two times. So this is the one that gets damage increase for buffs and debuffs. So we're going to get a big damage increase here. See what it does. 365 on the first hit block revive good, good, good god good lord i mean granted we have multiple debuffs on him but i mean that is a nutty skill Seven hundred and twenty thousand damage potentially this guy is going to be real interesting in arena this guy is going to be interesting let's take a look at the a1 finish him off we got some more damage coming in over here man man oh man oh man let's try it again Let's try it again. Let's get the A1 with some damage increase. We'll try a different hit here. We'll just pop over here. Boop, boop. Everybody takes damage. Let's go back. Let's try the A1 here and see what we do. Boop, boop. 114, 136. Goo, goo, gaga. And he gets the extra turn because he killed somebody incredible up to four hits guys four hits on this a1 and this a1 does damage this a1 does some damage let's do another hit here 267 everybody takes damage counter attacks aren't triggered oh man oh man this guy i think is going to be an absolute monster i cannot wait to bring him into arena let's just do one more quick attack on somebody so we're seeing some really good damage again these are single hit abilities they're all single hit, which is the one tricky thing, but you are getting that passive that increases, or I should say deals damage to everybody else. And the fact that it doesn't trigger counterattack is so big, so big. All right, we're in Platinum Arena. Where do we want to start? We definitely do a Harima team. Oh man, we could start with an Undead Horde team. Is there any Necrits on here? Probably not. It's kind of out of the, me the meta, but let's try Undead Horde, Roto, Sifi. Harima's on this. So we're going to see a big damage reduction. We'll go to this team next. Let's start here with the Taurus. Let's start here with the Taurus. We do have to protect him. That is the one thing. This dude is an absolute glass cannon, I think. But this should work. Let's try this. Especially with Necro when you're getting ally attack. This could be really nasty. Um, okay. I am excited to give this guy a shot here. What a crazy, crazy uh, kit. And so insane that I happened to pull him like... Just shocked. Just shocked. All right, let's try an ally attack with the A1. We should get... Do we get multiple hits here? I think we would. Let's give it a go. One, two... No, no, we only get one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at the damage. What the... F <laughs> he took the A1, bro. <laughs> what? Okay, we didn't strip here. We are going to get... Let's try any 50% to ignore defense. Okay, let's try this. And it ignores... Shield and strengthen and everything else. Let's see what kind of damage it does. Seafy's dead. Okay, we did some damage there. Armand's dead. Obviously, Armand's not a tanky champion. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't look like a very tanky Seafy either, to be completely fair. We did do some damage to UDK, of course, because we're going through Stone Skin, which is sick. And you'll and I, are we ignoring Stone Skin with the? Is this ignore Stone Skin? Ignores 100 of each enemy's defense. Is that ignoring Stone Skin? No. Surely not. Let's try. Let's try here. Attack one enemy two times. Let's hit the Taurus here. No, we aren't ignoring Stone Skin. We are doing damage to it though, so we're not we're not ignoring Stone Skin with a passive. For a second there, I was like, oh my god, is this is this dude truly insanely broken? Let's go with the A one again. Sit down, buddy. Sit down. Good lord. This guy. Anytime you have ignore stone skin abilities, you're already in the conversation for being potentially awesome. Now that was, hold on here. Isn't that undead hordes? Wait, hold on. What's that? What's that a one say again? Right? That's undead hordes. Why did he not multiple attack there? You need to see what's going on. Let me read this again. Tax on enemy two times, places an extra hit. If the target is under a buff, places two extra hits. Oh, you have to be under a buff and from undead hordes. Okay, I understand now. So you have to be under a buff and from undead hordes. Got it. 
Understand. Okay, so under a buff and undead hordes. Mm. All right, let's try it against Harima. This should reduce his damage quite a bit with Harima coming in there, but I'm really curious to see. Are there any buffs? So we do, I guess that would count as a buff. It counts as a buff here. Yeah, we did protect him. Let's just take out the, do a little bit of damage there to everybody else. Take out the Sung Wukong. Oh, his buff is gone now. Okay, pain. Okay, but we can block revive, right? Block revive. Yeah, just, you're done. <laughs> just, it's over. And damage still good, even with the, uh, even with, the Harima there. Now notice we're barely doing any AOE damage. So he really is more, it seems like more of a fit for the kind of single target type stuff. Not seeing massive damage yet from his abilities. Let's see what he would do with this. Ignoring 20% of the target's defense. Let's see here. Yeah, so AOE damage is really not anything special. But that A1 hits hard. That A1 hits hard. And if you've got someone with buffs up, I mean, especially when they're in... Ah, the block revive is great. The fact that he gets his turns back so fast. But especially if they've got buffs up and they're in undead hordes, you're, you're cooking there. All right, let's try. Here we go. We got Gizmak. We got Siegfrun. This should be interesting. So we're definitely getting some buffs up here. Let's see what we can do. Oh, the taunt comes up. We will ignore the stone skin, so that's good at least. I think we want to keep alive our Arbaeus here. Okay, we strip the stone skin anyway, and we strip the taunt. Who do we block? I think we just block revive the Gizmak here, which is the major problem at the moment. Seek from we got to worry about as well. This is the block revive right here, right? Nope, that was not the block revive. I am brain dead and can't read. <laughs> oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> Let's trigger, can we trigger the block damage? We did trigger that, that's good at least. Okay, he's surviving thanks to Necrit. Now he does have decreased attack on. And also, he can't go through block damage. So that is something to keep in mind, unlike some of the other champions, right? They're not going through block. This one places the block revive. Okay. Okay. I know how to read. It's incredible what I can read. All right. Let's see. Yes. Block revive on the Arbaeus. Beautiful. Beautiful. Here comes the Siegfried. He slowed down, so we're getting absolutely cooked with these debuffs. Oh, no. Are we cooked? But everybody's back. That's beautiful. Arbaeus coming in clutch. And now we get the taunt and the stone skin up. Everybody gets stunned. Basically, we're playing this like we're absolutely brain dead. But, uh, you know, at least we're getting to show off what he could do. You know what I mean? That's, that's the important thing here. At least we're showing off what he could do. Um, I need to lock everybody out, but I also need to get some shields up. Let's decrease attack here. Increase attack, let's switch back. Oh, okay, we're, we're cooked again. This is not block revive. Okay, let's just hit the A1. Oh, he got, what? He already got his passive back? What in the world? And we didn't strip that debuff? Oh no. Oh no, I need to protect him. Once he's down, he's down. Let's get a little protection on him. Keep him alive, Necrit. Keep my boy alive. We're petrifying. This is just an absolute bamboozle of a fight. Just a goofy fight right here. Okay, there we go. There we go. He's dead now. And we get the extra turn. Extra turn, big. Let's just hit with the A1 here. Nice. Believe he can switch forms and res, but it's not going to matter. Here we go. We sit him down. Okay, we got there eventually. Sloppy on my part, but still interesting to see his damage. And there's CGZ, obviously. Great player. 
Okay, here's a Marichka Siegfried team. Let's see what we can do here. It's interesting that he doesn't have an AoE, right? Like it's it's no AoE definitely is tricky um for sure. Tricky for sure. Let's just see. Can we see if we hit here? Can we trigger the, the Siegfried? No, not enough damage. Okay. I was hoping we trigger the Sieg from there. Where is the block revive? It's here. This is the block revive. I should probably kill. I should probably kill the Crixia here so she doesn't reset. But let's just see if we have enough damage with the passive to kill her. Trying to kill. Okay, we did. We did get the block damage there or the passive to kick in. We did block revive. We're petrifying thanks to Arbaeus. Everybody's getting petrified and somehow we're not getting turned into polymorph, which is shocking to say the least. All right, we killed the seek for him. We killed the Galathir courtesy of the passive, even though it was an A1 single target. Really cool kit. Really cool. And Scrap has a hell of a team. I mean, like, obviously it's not reset day right now, but man, man, oh man. Man, oh man, oh man. This is such an interesting champ. It's just, I think the one tough thing is you, you don't get a ton of damage AOE style, right? Like you're not really doing massive damage even with that passive. Like I thought reading that passive, I thought, oh, this guy's definitely going to be doing massive damage with his passive, right? But there, but it isn't. Odin went first. That's always tough. Marius is, oh my guy stole my buffs again. Son of a bitch, Odin. <laughs> we just weren't fast enough there. Hold on. Let's switch out for this team and we'll put Shuzen in here so we're faster. Speed, 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 my friends. It's all about speed. Always speed, everyday speed. Temporal chains, okay. We got to kill the warlord. This is what goes through stone skin. Wait, hold on. This one goes through stone skin. Yes, this goes through stone skin. Okay. Nice. Beautiful. That's what we want to see. Also, we uh, didn't get the lock out there, which is always tricky, of course. All right. Now he's dead. Now we come back around and this should be an easy, quick finisher. Let's block revive just for fun. Nice. Nice. Cool. All right. Taurus Marishka team the strength here 31 oh this looks fun oh we could go over here too i don't know if i'm faster though let's try here taurus Mariska team with a crixia and we're rolling shoes in now we're rolling shoes in we got stone skin on the crixia so we need to just absolutely blast through this stone skin boom cooked her she got cooked that's what we want to see Okay, again, we're not triggering counterattacks when we're doing damage to everybody else, which is fantastic. We love that. Thank God they did that. Otherwise, he would be basically useless because of Taurus Marichka, which are still super, super meta. Okay, can we kill? We have an increased attack. Can we kill this Marichka with the A2? We don't get any damage increase for buffs on us, unfortunately, and she doesn't have any debuffs or buffs, so he's not getting damage increase there. Okay, we did get the block revive. Okay, but we got blasted. <laughs> he's he, he's built so freaking, so absolutely just like a glass cannon right now. I mean, getting a getting an awakening on him will be big. <laughs> I was, hold on, let's check that again. This time we won't make the mistake of trying to screw around with the Marichka too early. Okay, hold on, hold tight, hold tight. He is, I mean, definitely I need to get more defense, more HP, more everything on him, but... Any champion that ignores stone skin has major, major arena implications. All right, let's go ahead and just drill in here. Boop, 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 boop. Marius is dead. This time we're not going to try to kill Marichka yet. We're just going to be smart and go for the Taurus. Let's see what kind of damage we get here on the Taurus. We do have one debuff and a buff up there. Hey, not bad for a skill versus Taurus when you think about it. Obviously, Taurus, his passive is so bonkers, but not bad. Not bad. Not like incredible, but not bad at all. All right, let's do the A1. 
Got the Towner attack, unfortunate. We're also losing attack every time we hit Taurus because of his absolutely broken passive. Okay, there we go, good. We've lowered his attack greatly by at least 30% here, which is a bummer. Okay, no reason for a block revive here. We'd rather just honestly kill with the A1 so we get an extra turn. Don't have to worry about locking her out since she's under. Yeah, we'll just save that for the moment. All right, kill with the A1. Extra turn, big. Big extra turn. Now, let's see. What's the big damage one? This ignores 50% of the target's defense. Perfect. Let's see if we kill. Ah, still just... Damage just isn't good on the AoE, right? He really is more of a specialist for A1, for like single targets. We're definitely not seeing great AoE damage. And frankly, that's probably for the best. He would be, I would think, a little bit more broken um, if his, for example, if his A1 or his A2 or A3 does massive amounts of AoE damage and single target damage. So this is probably for the best. Overall, I think he's definitely solid for Arena. I think the block revive makes him maybe better for live Arena than potentially um, you know, classic arena, depending on what teams you're facing, of course, if someone has a Sung Wukong or something like that. Um, but overall, I think he is, I think he's solid for arena. Definitely. There's some potential there. You could do some nasty stuff. Uh, I think you need almost a second damage dealer with him for AOE type things, right? Or super tanky teams that you're facing. He's going to maybe struggle with cause he's not getting damage on everybody. Um, but again, he's not awakened. He has a really strong build of course, but awaken, like, you know, imagine what he could do then. Let's take him into Hydra. I'm really curious to see what he does in Hydra. Now, the other thing here is that, of course, he is Shadowkin, so he's going to benefit from something like Lady Mikage. Uh, so I'm going to put him on my Toshiro team. We're going to compare his damage to Toshiro, who obviously now with all these Hydra changes is probably going to be one of the best Hydra champions. Not that he wasn't already, but even better than he was before. So we're going to go into Brutal. We're going to use my Brutal team here. I have been using Garal. We're going to take Garal out and we're going to throw in Iyasu. Really wish we could filter here, by the way, to select champions easier, right? Hey, Plarium, add that, please. All right, here we go. Where is he? He has no stars. He's all the way at the bottom. There he is, Iyasu. I don't think we need to prioritize anything in terms of what he's doing. So we'll just leave it alone. Everything looks good. Everyone's built correctly. Yeah. Everyone's built correctly. Nice. Good. We love to see it. All right. I think this will be a great test. This will be a great test. Let's see what he does in Brutal versus Toshiro's damage. So Toshiro built, obviously, as cruelty. Uh, not that that's going to increase his damage. It'll increase everybody's damage. But Toshiro built a Merciless and Iyasu not. So I'm really curious to see, can he, can he even compete? He might not be able to compete at all, especially since he's not awakened. Um, but speed-wise, they're similar, so this should be good. And then, of course, again, Lady Mikage's uh, A1, a random ally, so he might get more. Michinaki might get more. Toshiro might get more. There's a lot of Shadowkin on this team. So curious to see what happens. But I'm going to run this. We're going to come back, and uh, we're going to see just what he did. I'm, I'm, I hope it goes well. I know that he uh, supposedly could put up really good damage in Hydra, so Alina, we'll see. We'll see. All right, let me hit auto. We'll check it out, and we'll see how it goes. I'll be right back.
All right, guys, we are back. The Hydra has run its course. And uh, hey, 265 million damage from an unawakened Iyasu, equivalent to a six star awakened Michinaki with crushing Ren. That's pretty darn freaking good. Uh, and then also not far behind Toshiro, who's also five star awakened. So you could imagine this getting a lot more damage if he had more stats, of course. Uh, and keep in mind, Toshiro is a merciless, so potentially getting extra turns. I mean, you could build this guy in something like that, specifically for Hydra. I, I think it's safe to say that he is definitely damn good in Hydra and that he can do some, some nasty freaking damage. Um, and look, you know, hypothetically, the thing here too with Lady Mikage is one of these champions, one of these three is getting their A1. Who knows if I took one of these guys out, would he do even more damage, of course, because he's getting that ally attack potentially more with lady mkage um you know if there's less if there's less rng there in terms of who, who gets selected uh so yeah I, I think it's pretty safe to say iasu is really really good in hydra um and i think he's pretty good in arena as well i i think he's definitely got some use especially block revive is just such a powerful toolkit i i do wish maybe he did a little more damage on the aoe stuff but you know Nothing, nothing wrong with getting some damage out of that without triggering counter counterattacks and still being able to do really good single target damage. So I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I think he's a, a really good champion. I think he's absolutely worth going for. I definitely want to get a chance to awaken him to increase his damage, increase everything else. But overall, I am I am impressed with Yasu. I am impressed. I'm definitely gonna have to take him into live arena at some point and see what he does there and see kind of what is a. Uh, what his usefulness is in that, especially once I get him built, I think a lot faster because that's such an important thing for live arena. But just to remind you again of the stats, you know, not bad for not awaken, not bad stats for not awaken. So biggest thing that needs to change there for high level live arena is just the speed. And then also probably putting him in stone skin and in savage. Um, but his base stats are great, right? 1630 attack, 103 speed is not bad at all. Yeah. I, I think this dude is pretty damn good. Very glass cannon, but still pretty good. So, guys, let me know what you thought of this down below. Is it someone that you're going to pull for? Uh, do you think he's worth it? Or is it a pass for you? Obviously, tough to get. I still can't believe I got lucky on the 10X to have him pop out. So, uh, definitely makes up for, for some of the craziness of this week for sure. So, anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure, and I will catch you all soon. Big Papa Drock out.